Are you ready? I was born ready. Not really. I'm not ready. <laughs> Cut. Test, test, test. Testicles. What are you doing today, Jackie? We are doing this. We are. I'm not quite sure what we're doing to this. I don't know if it's just that and this and this. I have no idea what we're doing. So much stuff needs to happen. Mm -hmm. I think what we're going to do is I'm going to weld this some more. We were trying to decide on leaving all the exposed spot welds, which I think I might do. But we were also trying to decide if we wanted to just leave these up here, which I'll add some more. And then weld this solid and grind it or just leave all of it. So that's the decision that needs to be made. Either way, I've got more welding to do, regardless of which way we decide to go with it. So we're gonna do that and probably go ahead and take this thing off. You can't see behind it right now, but over here on the sides, we want to add some metal up behind here and actually make this side where it bolts to the fender. That way it's a little bit more sturdy. So if you know, you're at a car show and someone's kid decides they wanna stand on this before Valerie gets a chance to, you know, kick a kid off of it, at least it won't bend. And then you won't have any rattling between the roll pan or whatever you wanna call this and the fender. So we're gonna make some plates that weld up behind there, drill a hole, bolt it to the fender, and then we also have perforated metal that we want to put behind the holes so it's not just a straight hole through there. And these are actually dimple dyed, but when you're standing up, you can't really see that it's dimple dyed, so it just looks like holes in the roll pan, which I'm not a fan of. But when you add the perforated metal back behind it, it makes the dimple die stand out a little bit more and to me it looks a little bit better so we got that to do and we also have to build a hitch behind here and tie it into the frame and then we have to we're going to drill this up here at the top so that it's got some more bolts across there to hold it to the bed and i haven't decided i I think I might want to run it through the bead roller where I have this line and just put a bead roll up to this point just for the look of it and it'll stiffen that up a little bit more. So I guess that's what we'll do today. See how far we get. Low. You got half of my body's cut off, lady. Are you going to be standing? Or are you going to be creeping? I might be doing both. I don't know. But to I want you to sit on your creep. Forget my head. Don't and now I want head. you to turn around and look at the camera. Look who's in the whole camera. Oh. <laughs> For what reason? Just. Oh, yeah, I got you. It's a little loose. Which, uh, yeah. Like Pat's mom. <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Do we have to take this whole thing off right now? Not right this minute. I got to figure out what I'm going to do underneath to attach it to the fender. Just be able to do like a straight tab. We need to make cardboard templates for that. So we're coming oh, under. look, here's one of the needle rollers out of my. Oh, the one that we couldn't find. Yeah, yeah. That, that fell out of my uh, U joint. Yeah. It's got a new one in it now. We don't need that. 
kind of our distance. Let's see what it looks like. You cut it there straight. Start getting it a little bit smaller so we can try to get it fit up in there and see what all we have to cut. Why is that stuck in your head? Because it's playing over there. Oh. Some Credence. The Credence, the Clearwater, and the Revival. All together as well. All together as a team. In harmony. In like, you know, at least three part harmony. We're going up around the bend. We're working on the truck again. Yeah! Okay, okay, I'm right. Three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Should hopefully do what we need. Find out. Momentarily. I believe you can fly that we can make that work from there uh -huh. to there and we'll put a bolt right there okay and be bolted to the center and we'll weld it get in there all right all right can I cut it yeah I don't know if my arms could do it let's let's do it all I have to do is pull down? Yeah, it's ready, it's in there, it's where it needs to be, just pull it. Pull it hard, quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were gonna fall right on your butt. <laughs> oh my God. I can't do it at all. Give me that thing. That's how the pros do it. <laughs> I'm not a pro. Here, you want to try to cut the shorter side? Yeah. This should be easier. Got it. Okay. You're so happy that you just got that piece. But dude, I feel like Superwoman or something. You are. Made a shape. You made it. Show us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need to grind all that under there. That's gonna be fun. I need to grind this too. Turn on the compressor. Flip it upward. See that ball valve? On the bottom, turn it straight. Straight? Yep, like make the handle straight. Mm -hmm. Boom, it's ready to go. I was hoping it was gonna kick on because it was scared the shit out of you. <laughs> I'm gonna bend that a little bit. Does that take superhuman powers? <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't, but you never know. too before I put it under here. Might be a lot easier. Oh, come on, really? That's what you get for buying Harbor Freight drill bits. You love Harbor Freight. I do. Harbor Freight's fantastic until it's not. Really? Never had that happen before. Until yeah. today. Until, you know, I'm filming it. I was like, hey, time to make you look stupid. Well, I mean, did you see me trying to cut some metal? <laughs> Moved. Oh. Okay. Finish. 
welding up the stuff on the back side of this that needs to be welded up. You need that tag bracket off of it so that we can try to bead roll it if I can get it in the bead roller the way it needs to be in there with, with it all welded together now. All right, so we'll get our, we'll get that off of there. You can take that off of there and then I'll lay out our bead roll. Just gonna put per perforated metal back behind here to for these holes and look a lot better than just a hole. But since this is dimple dyed, I'm just trying to figure out if I want to attempt to weld this way out there or come up with something different. making a piece to back this where I had to cut all these notches in it to roll this around since I don't have a shrinker stretcher. So instead of trying to weld up every one of these little individual lines with nothing backing it, I want to make a piece of sheet metal to back that and it'll make it easier to get those welded up and grind it back. got to get our perforated metal back behind these holes but before I do that I'm gonna actually push these with a dimple die so that the metal is actually kind of sticking through the hole a little bit I think it'll look a little bit better make it look a little more three-dimensional so we're gonna get set up we're gonna get the whole locations marked and then we will grab our dimple dies and set this up in the arbor press and see if we can get these pushed through how we want them all right get this where we want it it might work. Gonna try to do this thing in one piece. As long as we can keep these holes center when we press them with the die. And then we'll break these edges over enough to where I can weld it to the back side. We'll find out if I can Keep them where they need to be, then we'll be able to do it in one piece. If not, then I'll have to cut this in sections and do it in three pieces, but that's our marks. Let's see. 
Did we get lucky enough for these to fall in the hole? Oh, yeah. Close enough. We can make that work. Might not be able to bend this thing as long as it is. It's too thick for this break. I was able to bend the shorter piece on it, but this stuff is pretty thick. It's definitely more than 18 gauge. And this thing has a hard enough time with 18 gauge when it's longer than a few inches. And we got it. A different color. I gotta spray these before I load them on. Mm -hmm. Then I gotta try to tape that tiny little thing up. Man, should I go along with that? No. No? This out here, this tap. Yeah, we like that. That's what we should do. It's a lot of time. Well, we're ticking away the moments that make up a dull day. <laughs> You're such a dork. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. Yeah, I think so. That is just my unprofessional opinion. Well, get to tacking it up then, lady. I'm not really gonna do this. <laughs> That's what you think. Am I? Yeah. I have no idea what Why are you still wearing knee pads? <laughs> because I had them on at work. How do I even make this go down? It's, you don't. <laughs> How do I make this go down? I feel like Darth Vader. No, I'll make sure you don't catch on fire. Thanks. I'm really excited. Oops. I'm nervous. Why? Because like, I feel like this is a responsibility. Valerie, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, she can't mess it up. If she does, I'll fix it. Okay. I'm just gonna put that like that. <laughs> that way your head doesn't <laughs> catch on fire. <laughs> you want me to make a weld and you can watch with the helmet down? Can I? Yes. Can you see? Yes. Okay. Yep. Bam. I'll keep going, but I don't want to make this more complicated for you. I'll do it. You did fantastic. But did I for real? Yeah. For like my first time doing this? Yes. Got this all welded up well probably not <laughs> we probably need more weld but we've got enough weld on it now that we're gonna come in here with a grinder and start shaping this edge so we'll hit it with a grinder grind it back start the shaping process and see how much more weld we need to build up on here to get what we want so we'll find out after we start grinding <laughs> Okay guys, we've got this all welded up, ground back, looking pretty decent. We are going to leave the tack welds at this seam here. I'm not going to weld that up solid, I don't think, and try to grind it back. But we did the outside edge, which I think looks a lot better. So now we got to make the filler pieces that are going in here. 
and test fit everything again and then it'll be ready to paint and go back on the truck. Oh, we got to put our expanded or our perforated metal in on the back side also. So we'll get that welded on there and then painted. Then it'll be ready to go back on the truck. While we have this off, I think I'm going to go ahead and make some cardboard templates for this because right now I can get this radius that I need, trace that onto a piece of cardboard right quick while we have this off of there I think that'll make our life a little bit easier where did my tri square go yep will it work on this side yes yes it will now let's stick this thing back on the truck. We'll make some pillar pieces out of metal. Make sure they fit where we want them, get them tacked on there. And then pull this back off the truck. Mm -hmm. I need something to hold that side up so we can get a bolt started. If only I had something. Definitely had some <laughs> movement in this thing after all the welding, but just enough that it won't allow that hole to line up. I think it's where I added this little brace back here. This roll is now hitting the bottom. So I don't know if we can tap that down in here or not. I might have to cut those welds back loose and bolt it up there and then tack it. I don't know if that recorded or not. I cut these tack welds loose. We have movement in this now. So we should be able to get it up where it needs to be on the truck, get it bolted in place, and then we'll get under the truck and tack this where it needs to be. Hopefully that works. There we go. Now for the problem side. Are you gonna work this time? You better work this time. Oh yeah. We need some drift action. Needs to slide towards the passenger side just a little bit. Just like that. Now will you work? Get in there. Stop trying to cross thread. This is where you live. Go home. She fits. Get out of my way, Jack. Excellent. Now, these nuts on the back side and the bolts through. Make sure the bolts still go into the fenders from the tabs that I built. And I need another 9 16 wrench. Just want to make sure this thing's going to pull in all the way across here. After that bead roll, the edge was kind of a little bit wavy. Pretty good, other than right here in the middle, but we're still going to drill a hole right here for a center bolt. So that, we'll get that pulled in where it needs to be. And we'll be good. Okay. There's already a hole down here in this thing, so. 
we can mark that from the back side. Marked. There we have it. All right, we're gonna get these pieces made up to cap this off. Cut that a little bit shorter. Okay. Oh yeah. Fitment for the tail light bezel. It's gonna work. Let's see if this fits the other side. What are the chances of that? Not actually fit. It might need a little bit of trimming. We still gotta get rid of that weld right there. The weld is right in my way. So I have to grind that out. But I can make two pieces off of this template. And this one I might have to trim down just a little bit on this top edge. But it's close enough. So let's get two of those made. Template transferred to metal. Time for some cutting. Now we cut those out with a grinder. And unfortunately, as always, it's raining outside, so I have nothing to clamp these two in here. So I guess I'll be holding them with some vice grips and attempting to cut these. Good times. Will they fit? Are you gonna fit? You're not gonna fit. All right, we got our filler piece made. Took a little while, a lot of grinding to get it to fit where we wanted it. So it's in there now, and now we're gonna tack this in. And I think I'm gonna make another filler piece right here just that goes up about halfway because we still have to feed wire through here but I think I want to cap this bottom piece I think it'll look better not that you'll really see it unless you're looking for it because with the light on it and the truck as low as it's going to be to the ground it'll be hard to notice but I know it's there so we might make that I think that's all we're gonna put on it until we drop it out of here. Then I'll get some more weld on it. And I wanna weld up the back side of this coal roll. Cold roll. And that way it can't move out from under there ever. And then we'll grind this edge back a little bit more and I'll probably weld this entire edge and then smooth it so it's rolled and it resembles this that's the plan man now we get to go do a whole bunch of grinding and make the other side fit all right we got this side fitted had to cut a tack weld out of the way and do some grinding on the piece but fits good so we're gonna go ahead and get that tacked in this thing back off and get the perforated metal welded in it 
finish welding these up on the back side. And then you need to decide if I want to make that filler piece. Put it on, take it off. Put it on, take it off. Now let's take it back off. We're gonna see if we can get this perforated metal tacked in on this side, hopefully without warping this panel too bad. We shall see. here that we have to do so those and then the end caps down here and then this will be ready for paint oh and drill a hole in the center all right guys we got all the welding finished up last night got the perforated metal installed in all of the holes which was kind of a pain to get the, these pushed out like that because it's I did all of them in just one piece. So th these three holes, that's all one piece. So marked it, pushed them with the uh, Arbor Press with a dimple die, which was kind of difficult to make sure they were all in the correct spot. But we managed to make it happen. And everything it's welded up and ready. I decided against putting the small pieces down here in the, the bottom section. You can't really see them when it's on the truck. So we are gonna take it outside and get ready to start the paint process. And hopefully we can make it look similar to the rest of the truck. We'll see. Primer time. Start her off with some red primer. I was gonna paint the back side of this with like a rubberized undercoating bed liner. But when I seen it was almost $20 a can and this red primer was $6.99, we went with the red primer. Paint, paint, all day long. Paint, 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 and I sing my song. We are primed. Let that dry for probably about 20, 30 minutes. And then start adding the next five colors or however many we're gonna need to attempt to make this look like the rest of the truck. Next, we're going with some leather brown satin why not it's like the closest thing i could find that resembled the dark rust on the truck so we'll see what it looks like and we'll let that dry black man we gotta let that dry now i gotta remember where all that black is so when i start sanding the color out of it i can sand through to the black. All right, our black and our brown is dry. We're gonna use the, the wet sand trick again. Add the wet sand to it in a few places. That way when we put our color on, we can just brush the sand off of it and it'll show the black and the brown through that. Got the seaside and the pistachio again. Let that dry and we'll come back and start some sanding. All right, guys. It 
you know, looks 75 years old to me. Looks a little bit brighter actually on camera than it is in person. So once we get it on the truck though, if it's too bright or doesn't quite match like we want it to, then we'll, we'll add some more to it on the truck so we can kind of get back and look at it compared to the rest of it and see what it looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the tail light housings and then we'll get it back on the truck and see what it looks like. we got the roll pan back on the truck again I did some more work on the uh, paint job here the patina job whatever you want to call it I wasn't super happy with it the first go around it was just a little bit too much blue in it it still isn't quite where I want it to be so I will probably do a little bit more work to it maybe in the next couple days see if we can get it a little bit closer than what it is it does look pretty good it has areas that match the truck pretty good and then a couple areas like I said that I'm not 100% happy with but we'll eventually get it right where we want it but for now, this is going to do. <sighs> All right, guys, that's going to be the end of this video. If I change anything on the back of the truck as far as paint and patina, I'll show you that in a later video. But that's going to do it for this one. Um, we'll be moving on to probably more rust repair. Um, on the front fender, driver's side fender of the truck. Got a pretty good amount to do there. I don't know if I'll film all of it. I'm sure everyone gets bored watching massive amounts of rust repair, but we've got a lot of that to do on this truck. So anyway, um, we're going to get to that probably in the next video. And we have some running board issues to take care of, which may be in the same video, might be in the video after. But anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for the next one where we'll continue to try to make a GMC a truck again and get it on the road as soon as possible. All right, we'll see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.